Having trouble studying? Maybe it's not noisy enough. Let me give you guys a scenario. Imagine that you are in school and the big exam is coming up, so you decide to head over to the library for a last minute cramming session. You sit down and you're ready to focus when you realize there's some jerk around that's sniffling and snuffling and making a terrible noise and someone else keeps shuffling books and slamming them onto tables and someone else just fired up the copy machine and how can you learn and concentrate in such a noisy environment? Well, I've got something interesting to tell you. Noise might be necessary for learning. Now I gotta come clean, the noise I'm talking about isn't actually sound, but rather neural fluctuations, your brain cells firing in different directions when presented with the same stimulus. Now this discovery itself is not that new. A professor of Stanford named William Newsom discovered this about 20 years ago. He saw that based upon the fluctuations in neurons in an animal's brain, it could influence that animal's decision-making process even when faced with the same stimulus. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you see a chipmunk and you hand out a little tasty treat. Now that chipmunk's brain has neurons firing every which way and in this particular instance they fire in such a way that the chipmunk senses danger and runs away. The next day you encounter that same chipmunk in that same park and you hold out the same treat. Now this time the chipmunk's neurons for no other reason other than just random fluctuations fire in a different way and the chipmunk decides to take the treat. And now the chipmunk has learned something. It has learned that when this behavior is done, it gets rewarded with this treat. Now here's the really crazy thing. Maybe our decisions require this sort of noisy neural activity for us to actually do one thing over another and find out whether that was the right choice. There's a scholar at Stanford named Dr. Tatiana Engel who recently published a work in Nature Communications that looked into this further. For one thing, we see now that these noisy neurons, they're not in the decision-making part of the brain. They're not in the cortex, they're in the sensory area of the brain. Dr. Engel wanted to see if perhaps this bias from neural fluctuations could could end up influencing behavior, so she created a neural simulation in a computer. And with some of these simulated neurons, she made sure there was no bias. And she saw that these neurons were incapable of learning. They would perform various tasks, but they never associated the outcome with either a reward or a punishment, so they never learned. They didn't understand the connection between the two. So perhaps this noise is necessary for us to associate things into categories. So what does this mean for us in the future? Well, in the short term, probably not that much. But Learning about learning and learning how to learn is always an important element. It can lead us to new teaching methods, new student environments, maybe even science fiction solutions, like a chip in your brain that stimulates neural fluctuations so that you make different decisions. Which should come in handy for me because maybe then I'll finally associate what behavior it is I'm doing that gets me all those tasty treats. But I have a question for you guys right now, this week. Where do you think our decisions come from? Are they conscious? Are they elements of things we're unaware of and therefore are external to us? I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you should decide to like it and subscribe to this channel and then check out these other videos over here. You might learn something. <laughs>